The song says, wanting nothing, wanting nothing, but all I am and all I have, I give to you. Wanting nothing, wanting nothing, all I am and all I have, I give to you. And then her second verse said, and holding nothing, holding nothing, all I am and all I have, I give to you. Lord, I'm holding nothing. I'm holding nothing. But all I am and all I have, I give to you. Sometimes we come to prayer looking for something, but today I feel that way. Wanting nothing. Wanting nothing, but all I am and all I have, I give to you. Today, that's how I feel. Wanting nothing, Lord, today I'm wanting nothing, but all I am. And all I have, I give to you. Sometimes you can't, because of situations, you, you go through life and you get offended and certain things you want to solve yourself, but you got to get to the place where you just tell the Lord, and I'm holding nothing. I'm holding nothing. All I am and all I have, I give to you. I feel that somebody need to give him some, some offenses. I'm holding nothing. I'm holding nothing. But all I am and all I have, I give to you. Ooh. All I am and all I have, I give to you. All I am and all I have, I give to you. Ooh. My God. My God, my God. I honor pastor this morning and his awesome wife for permitting us to be obedient to what I feel the Lord has called us to do. We're in for a journey because the Bottom line is this, if you do not come to the place in the Lord where your obedience to God takes first precedent over anything and everything, then you'll never get anywhere in God. There's a difference in getting somewhere in God and getting what God has in his hand. And so we have a nation that seeks the hand of God. But I believe that the clarion call to the hour of sacrifice is for those people who say, Lord, I'm not just seeking your hand, but I'm seeking your face. Not just seeking your hand, 
Not just, not just here because I want to beg you for some stuff. I'm here because I want to get to know you in a way that you supply it even before I can ask for it. That you all know, listen, you know all of my needs according to your riches and glory. So I turn my life in another direction because I, I begin to understand that my call to prayer is not just for my stuff. My call to prayer is an answer to a call from the Lord just like people say the Lord called me to preach. Some of you all don't believe that. The Lord called me to preach. The Lord called me to be a prophet. The Lord called me to be an evangelist. And when it comes down to the Lord calling to the office of intercession, many don't answer that call because it's not glamorous. It's not popular. Oh, Jesus. But I'd rather be a person that knows God than no ministry. I said something right there. I'll just... Leave it alone, because I just, that, that, that was a statement. I'd rather be a person that knows God than to know ministry. And that's why when I come to 5 a.m. prayer, it's not about looking cute. It's about, it's about, it's about getting to the point where, where, where these are my sackcloth and ashes. This is, where, this is where I tell the Lord that I break down all of what people think Juanita Bynum is. And I come before you broken before you, wanting you not to see my outfit, not to see my talent, not to see my jewelry, not to see how pretty I can put on makeup. But God charge my heart. Heart. Check my heart. And if you find anything in me that should not be, take it out. Come on, somebody, somebody right quick, just, just, just begin to tell the Lord to take it out, take it out, take it out. Come on, tell the Lord, take it out. Because this ain't about the music. This is about God hearing your heart. What becomes music to God is what your spirit. God break me. God mold me. God wash me. God cleanse me. Take it out. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is, this is, this is a time when we when we do what the word say and we lament before the Lord, which avail before God, we, 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 we come to him because watch this. And when I talk about, when I talk about uh, uh, my people wanting, wanting their stuff, because in regular services, let me just say this, in regular services, we have, we have so much that get in the way of God, so much. You know, people we sitting next to and you know, Outfits and shoes and my bracelet and my this and my that and, and my glasses and my and, and, and my heels and my friend. But if you don't ever come to a place where you meet God in the sanctuary and it's not about anything else, it's not about anything else but hearing his voice. It's not about anything else but allowing God to help you understand that there is something that he is calling you to do that's greater than can be seen on the outside. He is calling you today to empower you, not for your right now, but he's using you to empower you for the nation, not just your family. Let me read something to you here. Let me read something to you. No more reverb. Go to Jeremiah 33. A little more reverb in the unit, please. Jeremiah 33. It says allergy seasons for me. But how many know when God called you to do something sick? Well broke, tired, 
Almighty, what we got to understand is it is his obedience. I'm done for that now, musicians. It is, it is the obedience of the Lord that he becomes concerned with. Because I'm going to tell you, in the upcoming weeks, you know, when you start out in prayer, you start out excited. You know, I did. The first couple of times I felt like the Lord called me to prayer, felt like God called me to do this. I was, you know, I was, I was, I was just so moved in my spirit when the Lord told me, I want you to come to the church at 5 a.m. and I want you to pray and I want you to, to be there every Tuesday morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. And I came and, and, um, but this was one of the scriptures that motivated me to come. Um, Jeremiah 33 and 1. Catherine, if you have a microphone, you're going to read. Jeremiah 33 and 1. What does he say? Moreover, mm -hmm. the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah mm -hmm. the second time mm -hmm. while he was still shut up in the court of the guard, saying, mm -hmm. Thus no says. Reverb, wherever the sound people are. Go ahead. Thus says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Who made the earth? Uh -huh. The Lord whom formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. It says, thus said the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it. Earth, the Lord who formed it and established it. The Lord is his name. What does it say? Call to me and I will answer you. Hold on a minute. The Lord who established the earth. Establish the earth. Establish the earth. That word in there doesn't just say that the Lord created the earth. He established the earth. Anybody, pastor, pastor can, can get some contractors to build this church. But when they get through building it, then God has to use him to establish the church. Now, what do you mean by establishing the church? He has to use him to determine what would be the spiritual personality of the church. He has to use him to put the guidelines in the church. He has to use him to declare to the people what is God, what is not God. What is God looking for? What is God not looking for? So when you come into the, into the house of the Lord and you sit under a person who has been used by God to establish the church, then you are trusting them to bring order to your life. And so they, 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 they put you in the atmosphere of order so that you can help, they can help you understand God. Amen, somebody. Let me, okay, let me break it down like this. There is a pulpit. And so, and, and so the pulpit, the pastor preaches from the pulpit. And the majority of the places that I have been to, the pulpit is one step, two step, three step, four step, five step, but however matter, the pulpit is always somewhat elevated from the floor. If it's not elevated from, from the floor, there was a podium up there. Now, what is this for? This is to establish the fact that the word stands taller than anything else in the house. Oh, come on, somebody. That was good right there. So when the pulpit is established and the pulpit is raised, see, that's why this is so funny. When I walk in churches, it helps me to understand the mentality and the level of the spirit at times of the man of God. Especially when you build the church. So if in fact the pulpit is elevated, then at the time of construction, when the pastor gave the orders for them to build those many steps to the pulpit, then what that pastor is saying is that not only is the word first and foremost, but it is high and lifted up. Then when he chose to put the worship team on the platform, it says the word and worship is high and lifted up. Are oh, you not hearing that? Which means church cannot even be going on and you can walk in the sanctuary and the first time you see the pulpit, it ought to be a metaphor to you that no matter what I'm going through, I just walked into a place that had just helped me to remember that regardless of where I am, the Lord will get the last say so. Regardless to what I'm going through, the word will be high and lifted up. So when, when the church building is established, 
It reminds us of what is to take place, what will take place, what is precedent. So when the Bible said that the Lord God established the earth, that he has already determined what is precedent. He has already determined what is first, what is last, what is medium, what is tall, what is victory, what is defeat. Now, now he says, before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. Okay, what am I trying to say to you? That, that, that you don't just have to come to prayer and bring your problems. I don't know if I have a church in here today. You don't have to get up and come to pray about what concerns you. Because before you were formed in your mother's womb, I already knew you. I've already, watch this, I've already established you. Well, then, prophetess, well, why am I going through what I'm going through? You're going through your process. But your end has already been established. You know I can't get nobody to pray right there. Because I know people have taught you. Pray, pray, pray and ask the Lord to help you. Pray and ask the Lord to strengthen you. Pray and ask the Lord to, to take this away from you. And take that away from you. But the word tells us that when you get to know God. He said he that cometh to God must come believing that he is. And that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. I don't come praying my problems. I come declaring my answers. I come to prayer to decree a thing. Okay, maybe some of y'all didn't get what I just said. Pastor, I don't think they just got what I just said. I came to decree a thing. I don't come to prayer to beg for a thing. I come to prayer to decree what I do know to be his will and what I don't know to be his will to find out what is his will so I can decree that. Okay, I don't think y'all hear me. God was God, but the earth was not established until he spoke something out of his mouth. I just heard something right there. Your family already got the victory. You already got the victory. God for you to speak that out of your mouth. Now, I know this is going to take me a minute. It's going to take me a minute. It's going to take me a minute. It's going to take me a minute because, because I know we've been trained with handicapped prayers. I was too. Oh God, help me. Oh Lord, fix it. Oh God, I just want you, God. I just want you to give me strength. Oh Lord, I just want you to just help me. Help me to stop smoking. Oh God, mm -mm, mm -mm. Father, I bless you. Father, I praise you. And I decree that everything about my flesh will begin to line up with your word. I cancel nicotine. I cancel alcohol. I into divine obedience I speak my flesh into a living sacrifice I exalt you with my life today I command my life to come into order okay sit down sit down sit down It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, Lord, will you? Oh, come on, somebody. It's not, Lord, will you? It's, Lord, you've already done it. And there's some interference trying to take place in my life. God, when you saved me, you've already established me. And the fowls of the world is trying to interfere with my victory. So I'm not coming to prayer to see if God is able. I'm coming to prayer to so every diabolical, demonic attack that the enemy has ever put out over my family. Y'all sit down, let me tell you this. God is not on trial. Woo, I 
feel the Holy Ghost in here. I feel the God ain't on trial. Because my Bible said that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly all. Oh, above all, you can ask or think whether or not God can is that on trial. What's on trial is whether or not you can pull what God can from the third realm and dispatch it into your life. Tell somebody, if you can pull it, you can have it. I said, tell your neighbor, come on, if you can pull it, you can have it. And you know why people, why people are taking a little time saying that. I don't, I don't see a lot of people real excited about that because they want you to pull it for them. They want you to pray for them. They want you to anoint them. But see, what God is calling for is for you to get up and anoint yourself. The Bible said that David had to look at himself and begin to prophesy to himself. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. I'm just trying to, just trying to establish the mindset. He can. And he will. He can. And he will. Because I'm not going to stop coming before him until I find his will. And when I know what his will is, the gates of the hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, come on, somebody. If I have to go down last breath. I'm going to go down decreeing what I know is his will. Let me help you with something. The book of Proverbs says that there are many that there are many plans in the mind of man. But only that which is of God will stand. There are many plans. Many, 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 many things that we think is the Lord. But there's only the plans that are of God that will stand. Let me help you with this. I got to really help you with this because, because if you don't understand what is the God level of faith, the God faith, I'm not talking about the church faith because there is a faith. There is a faith that is of the church that is a church faith that will mess you up. Now I'm going to help somebody right now. Because I believe, I believe I'm about to hit something right here. There was a church faith because I believe that the church went through this whole ram at one time of name it, claim it, and, you know, just go hit your, hit, step out and, and put some blessed oil on the car and, and you speak it by faith. And, and it was, it, it was, it was, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. It was not just the faith movement. But it was the faith movement and people, there were many people that took that movement out of context. And so they took it out of context and they gave, they rent money and they did stupid things talking about it was my faith. And so what we do is we start, we start, we start claiming stuff that God has never matured us to receive. It was never his intentions to give it to you. Hey, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I just minister this for a minute? Can I minister this for a moment? Let me minister this for a moment. If some of you have children in here. This, this is your daughter. How old is your daughter? Nine? What kind of car do you drive? A, a minivan? Well, just give her the keys and, and let her go and drive home and meet her later. Oh, no, 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 no. She wants the keys. She's asked you for a minivan for her next birthday. She wrote you notes. She colored you pictures. She put it on the refrigerator. She done told all her friends at school 
that she believing that her parents is going to buy her a minivan. She's gotten into fights because they tried to convince her she wasn't going to get that van. And instead of her spending time on the playground, she's over in the teacher's parking lot looking at the different kind of vans and determining what kind of music she's going to play in her van. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Well, then go ahead and give her some keys to a minivan because you will meet her in the hospital on the mark because regardless of how much faith she has, you can't give her that until you know she's able to steer it and drive it without killing somebody else. You got people believing God for ministries that you can't drive. You got people believing God for houses that you can't drive. You got people believing God for money that you can't drive. You're not mature enough for it. Sit down, church. Sit down. Sit down. If I just, if I just helped you a little bit, just say you just help me. You just help me. You just, you just, you just, you just really help me, prophets, because I've been asking. I've been, I've been asking them for five years. I've been, I, I've been, I've been, I've been giving my offerings, waiting for the miracle. Mm -mm, that ain't what he said. He didn't want to say. You shall prosper, even as your soul prospers. Then don't ask me for a Cadillac when your soul is in kindergarten. When you begin to prosper in your walk with me, then I will prosper your life. And I cannot give you beyond what you have matured and purified for. Okay, okay sit down. Sit down, because I got to walk through here. I can see that right now. Because I'm going to lose some of y'all right now. See, this is where you lose the paparazzi at. This is where you lose the car and the house people. This is where you lose the husband people. All the people that want God for a husband, a house, a car, some money. I thought she was going to tell me. I didn't, I, I, I didn't get up out of my bed with this. I don't know if she's gonna really tell me how to, how to get to God. I am. I am. But we got too many people trying to get to God without trying to get to his will. And if you don't pray his will, you gonna be praying for 10 years and none of that stuff gonna come to pass. Okay, I just said something right there. I said, if you don't find his will, if you don't, listen, if you don't learn how to walk in prayer and ask God to reveal your will to me, whatever it is, you will it to be so. Then the reason why you give up in the middle of believing God for something is because you don't know his will. Okay, let me help you with something. Jesus, the son of the living God, went into the garden of Gethsemane and he prayed because there was a bitter cup that he needed to drink. Now, Jesus, the son of the living God, Jesus, the son of the living God, he cried, he prayed until sweat came out of his brow like blood. He cried, he prayed, but God did not answer him. Jesus did not get help from God until he said, nevertheless, not my will but thine will be done when he spoke that the bible said and god sent ministering angels to help him with what god's will sit down sit down sit down sit down sit down, sit down, sit down. andre god sent angels only to assist him When he said, thy will be done. See, that gets you out of the prayer line for strength. I'm, 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 y'all don't, yeah. 
you know, I'm teaching real good today. That gets you out of the prayer line for, I'm just coming out here for strength. No, 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 no. You don't get in the prayer line for strength. You find his will for strength. Because when you start saying, I don't want to go through this, God. And this thing is hard. And I've been doing this a long time. And I feel weary in my body. But nevertheless, God, not my will, but thine will be done. Then you will feel the ministry. Angels begin to help you and support you. Not to get out of it, but support you to go to your cross. Nobody said some of y'all just kind of looked at me like, huh? Watch this. The word says for the spirit. Saints, I gotta cancel this. I gotta cancel this, 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 this erroneous doctrine. For the word says, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he does, he's anointed me to preach the gospel, his will. To bind up the brokenhearted, his will. To set at liberty those that are bruised, his will. Did anybody see Jesus asking God for a car? You want me to walk a three three day journey, but you're gonna have to give me a car. And you can't let me ride in there like that because everybody know who I am now. So I got to have a kind of car that's gonna make them to know that I'm the son of the living God. Now I'll get you a donkey and you walk. And, okay, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. Because your purpose is not for you to be glorified. Your purpose is for you to die in your tribulation so I can be glorified. Now, now see, now see, I'm telling you, Pastor, watch this. By next week, half the building is probably gonna be full. Because, because people think that prayer is prostituting God. God give me some, God give me some, God give me some. But prayer is coming to God and being broken so that He can use you to complete His will. The same job that He had for Jesus is your same job to snatch those uh, out of the fire hating even the garments uh, that are spotted by the flesh uh, your job and your crave uh, and your cry and your push uh, and your will and your travail uh, ought to be after God's will not after stuff y'all sleepy Because here we go, well, why we got to get up at five? Well, why well, she can't do this? It'd be more convenient if she can do this at seven o'clock in the evening rather than five o'clock in the morning. But my Bible told me that when God began to transform Jesus into the power of receiving help from heaven, whoa, he had to leave somebody sleep. Okay, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't, uh, nobody may understand why you gotta get up out of your bed. Uh, and you don't, you don't understand why your girlfriend can still be asleep and your husband can still be asleep. Because when God chooses somebody to come into an hour of power in their life, you got to leave somebody asleep. Somebody got to be somewhere around you, not understanding that you in the presence of the Lord. I've been called to this level. Here. here we go. I'm here because, watch this. I'm here because, I'm here because this is my calling to my place of power. Okay. Here goes some people said this, honey, I'm gonna come to this prayer and I'm gonna be coming to this prayer and by the time we get through this prayer, honey, Ooh, my life gonna be powerful. Your life was powerful when you woke up. Your, your life became empowered when you started driving down the street in this direction. I don't think, because see, in exchange for sacrifice, you receive power. In exchange for sacrifice, you receive a fresh anointing. In exchange for sacrifice, you are able to have the whole world revealed unto you. Now sit down. Let me say this because I just hit something in the spirit. Jesus did not leave the Garden of Gethsemane, of Gethsemane wondering if the world was going to be saved. Well, I didn't cry all night long. 
and I didn't travail till sweat came down like blood. I wonder if the people gonna really be free. Well, I've been waiting on God to do this for a long time. And I know that this is God's will. And it ain't came to pass yet. But then why do I keep going? Why don't I lose my faith? Because when I tap his will, he strengthens my faith. He's only obligated to strengthen what, what, is, what is his will. He don't have to keep you encouraged about stuff he ain't never told you to ask for. Okay, I'm gonna say something right here that's gonna be heavy. Because, because if you gotta keep on getting touch and agree, touch and agree, because there's some stuff, man, that God done told me, Johnson, that I know it's his will, I'll never get discouraged about. I, okay, come on, y'all ain't saying it. I don't care what it look like, I know what God said. I don't care what it sound like, I know what God said. And then, 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 then see, so see, some of y'all, some of y'all think your faith is your feelings, and your faith is a good time in church, and your faith is you naming and claiming. But your faith is when you find out what God's will is. Then when the word says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, which means it's going to be attacked, but it will not be overcome. It shall be attacked, but it will not be overtaken. And that's the reason why I can still come to church and shout, even though I haven't seen it come to pass in the natural but I seen it in the spirit and the strength of God is what confirms it how do you know God said that like if God promised you a hot dog shop and you used to be a crack addict and he wants you to have a hot dog shop right here because hot dog shop will minister to a lot of people you can't hardly go to a family barbecue and somebody say hot dog without you. Girl, you better leave them hot dogs alone because every time I hear the word hot dog, something just happened down in my spirit. See, some of y'all laughing, but it's the truth. It's a, come on, it's the truth. You walking in the grocery store and go down the aisle and you see the hot dogs and you say, Phew. somebody said, what you praise God for, honey? God gave me a word about a hot dog stand and I can't hardly pass a hot dog. I can't hardly see the Oscar Mayer commercial and I just feel like running down in my soul. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. Because when it's the will of God, you may feel a little hit sometimes emotionally because you don't see it coming to pass. But in your spirit, you don't lose faith. Oh, come on. See, it's one thing. It's one thing having your feelings hurt because you don't see nothing. But it's another thing to say, I don't have faith in it anymore. You got to hold on to the real faith of God. No matter what you see, the reason why God is it so that you see nothing happen is to put you in perfect faith because if you can see it and touch it oh come on then it's not faith it's only faith when you can't see nothing when you can't touch nothing when you don't know nothing and all you can stand on is what God said oh this gonna be it's going to be harder than I thought. It's going to be harder than I thought. Can I, let me say that one more time. You're not in real faith until you don't see nothing. Okay, watch this. I'm going to take you somewhere. I got five minutes. It says here, call to what that word is, Catherine? Me. My uncle. Me. My grandma. Me. My daddy. Me. Let me call the pastor. Me. Let me call my prep Me. Let me call my friend. Me. Let me call my husband. Me. Why well, I can't find nobody? Me. Why well, ain't nobody gonna help me? Me. I feel like I'm all by myself. Me. I didn't left out here. Me. statement right here anybody that you call on to help you with something that was ordained by God for you and God to walk out he is promising you today this is a promise from God you ready for a promise from God this is a promise from God you gonna be disappointed 
and they gonna fail you and they gonna backstab you and they gonna let you down right at the brink of when you think they should have helped you because what the Holy Ghost is trying to let you know I said call me because if I let Gwen make it happen for you then she gonna get the glory but I gotta take you this route where you ain't got no help because what I'm looking for I'm looking for more glory what I'm looking for I'm looking for praise you don't hear me I don't think y'all hear what I'm saying he's got to isolate you can I help you with something it ain't a God thing till you're by yourself. Okay, I, I, I just said something right there. I said, it ain't no God thing till you by yourself. It ain't no God thing till everybody walk away from you. It ain't no God thing till you look like you about to fail. I don't think y'all hear what I'm saying. It cannot be classified as a God thing until it looks like nobody human can help it. Catherine, he said, is y'all here today? Yeah. People in the overflow room, are you here? I don't, y'all don't, okay, two or three of y'all is woke. <laughs> Captain, what'd he say, what'd he say? Call to me and I will answer you. I will answer you in what? And show you great and mighty things. Oh. And show you great and mighty things. You and Gwen is shouting over a pizza shop when God want to take you and give you a restaurant downtown. But you so busy trying to see the vision of God about your life through somebody else's vision. But he said, if you call on me, then I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things. How do I know it's God? Because when he shows it to you, it ought to scare your flesh to death. You ought to be terrified if God shows you something that he's about to do for you. I'm going to tell you a secret. You ain't got enough money to do it. You ain't got enough favor to do it. You don't know enough people to get it done. That's why you shout when you see what God wants to do because that's how you know that it's a God thing. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to get this done. I don't know how I can work that out. I don't see no way. I ain't got enough money for that. Whoa, you know I'm preaching right now. I said, do you know I'm preaching right now? Do you know I'm preaching right now? How am I going to do it? Okay, well, if you're a carpenter, if you're a carpenter, Johnson, and God says, go out in the backyard of your house, this is your word from the Lord, and build me a shed. That ain't no hard job. Because you can go right there to Home Depot get you some two by fours, you a skilled contractor. You done build houses and mansions. You can go out in the backyard and build a shed with your eyes closed. That wasn't the will of God. The will of God is come over here and build this whole youth center. And this is how much money you got and this is how much it costs. And soon as God gives you the word, all the people in the city that used to love you, all the city officials, everybody turn and get you. All the permits and stuff you need, either they get fired or they quit. So now you ain't got favor in the office. You ain't got favor with the bank. You ain't got favor in your pocket. But now you got a big old vision that God didn't give you. That's when it hit you. I'm in faith. I'm, I'm experiencing faith for the first time. Go with me to Hebrews 1. Let me tell you why. Because I know, I know a lot of y'all say, that's my, that's my faith. Excuse me. Faith is out. Honey. We got two minutes. We got two minutes and I'm through. A sacrifice. You're going to see more things happen during the course of your sacrificing to come here. Because you're coming from cross town. I'm coming from cross state. Come on here, somebody. 
Took you 20 minutes at max to get here. 45 minutes to an hour, depending on where you live. Took me seven hours to get here. And two planes. But when he calls to a place, <laughs> I'm gonna say something. He only answers from the place he's called you to. Okay, I just, I just, I just said something right there. I just said something right there. I just said because you know what? He called Moses from a burning bush. He didn't say stay six miles from me. And the bush is over here, and you hollering, "What you want, Lord?" Okay, I didn't hear nobody say nothing to me. burning bushes out of the parking lot. And God is allowing Moses to look out because I can see outside from here. I can see, the, I can see the cars. And I look out there and see a burning bush. Wow, there's a bush out there burning. 20 minutes later, the bush still burning. It ain't burned up. Two hours later, bush still burning. Then I hear the voice of the Lord and I go, yes. No. When God began to burn the bush, he called him closer. And he gave him his assignment. He said, I called you to these grounds. Now take your shoes off because this place is holy. Now, 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 now you get this, get this, get this, get this. Ten feet from now. Ten feet this way is not holy. But I decreed this spot to be the spot where the bush would burn and I would speak out of the flame. I don't think y'all hear me. Well, I can pray at home, not when it's a clarion call because what the Lord is saying, I chose this spot and however long you gotta drive to get here and if you gotta stay up all night, the next level in your life, he's calling you to this spot. stay asleep Moses got his assignment to go and free the children of Israel and establish the kingdom of God how we would in come in and out of God's presence from a bush he went to school when he was Pharaoh's son quote unquote he sat with the best he learned their ways but none had the ability to teach him the tabernacle he got that from a bush okay. I can't get nobody to get excited about that right there because the stuff that you're trying to accomplish, you're trying to accomplish with intellect and God is saying, do you not know that I can speak a word to your spirit and bring you to the parking lot of one place and speak one word and take you through one season that'll change your life forever? Do you not know that one 5 a.m. prayer can alter your destiny? Because when God pumps your spirit and says, be here, he will never, never orchestrate a place that he don't have a people that he wants to call to that place. And if you come to where the Lord said come to, there is no way that God won't answer prayer. There's no way that you won't see miracles and divine blessings and breakthroughs and the enemy gonna take his hand offer of your house offer of your money offer of your family because I showed up at the place I, I heard I, I heard him I heard him call me to the place some of y'all were asleep and the alarm went off and you said I ain't going I'll catch him next time and some hit your spirit. And you got on up. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all went to bed late and said, well, ain't no sense in me trying to think. I'm going to wake up now. But when it came 4 o'clock, your eyes came open. And you got energy from nowhere. But there's some people in here that told the devil, you ain't going to trick me. I ain't going to bed. If I got to sit up all night, because I'm not going to miss my divine timing. Because I know this, that God wouldn't 
called Prophetess Bynum to get on a plane and interrupt her schedule and come all the way to Kansas City at 5 o'clock in the morning if God wasn't getting ready to do something that's about to blow my mind. This is it. This is what you've been waiting on. This is your breakthrough. in here. All you got to do is show up. That's half the battle. Half the battle is showing up. Half the battle is being where the Lord told you to be. If you don't know what to say, if you don't know how to pray, when you show up, sit down for a minute. Let me say this to you. And I'm through. Sit down. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. Let me say this to you. I'm through. I'm through. You did not read nowhere where Moses got to the grounds that was holy. And he just stopped praying. And Father God, I just know you called me to this place. And Lord, I want to thank you because I see the burning bush. And God, I praise you and I magnify you because I don't know what you're going to say. But I'm out here in this wilderness and I done killed a man and I don't know what I'm doing. And Lord, help me because I've been exiled. Oh God, give me your strength because I've been exiled. I'm running for my life. I need you, God. Help me, God. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. When you show up at the place, you ain't got to say nothing. Because when you get in the right place at the right time, the Holy Ghost will begin to tell you what your next step is. Y- y- I don't hear nobody saying nothing. And the first thing he'll require you to do is take something off. That's why you got to give up your sleep. That's why you got to give up your rest. Because when he calls you to the place called holy, you got to come giving up something. So you show up, you show up and I'll talk. Let me, let me help you with this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is, this is, this is some deep stuff that I really can't get into that I'll be getting into in weeks to come. Because I don't know how long the Lord going to have me here. I know, I know it's going to be. You know, a few, a few Tuesdays, I know that. But see, you can be praying for somebody in your family, a brother, sister. And this, and, th- and this is your prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I've been praying for that crack spirit. Lord, break them drugs off you. God, break crack. God, I break crack in the name of Jesus. Now you praying. You come to the place of the fire. You begin to pray in tongues, pray in the Holy Ghost. You'll find yourself God in the name of Jesus, and I break the power of the bracelet that He be- and that thing. You just feel like what bracelet? What bracelet? Okay, I know He do wear a bracelet, but now out of my spirit came, I break the power of a bracelet that He's been wearing, only to find out later that somebody that practices witchcraft gave him the bracelet. So it's not the crap that's keeping him from church. It's a witchcraft spirit, but you don't know that until you come to the holy place because that's the place that all things are revealed. I just said something right there. I just said, that's the reason why God had me to bring the Ark of the Covenant to the meeting. That's why I could not just do 5 a.m. prayer without it because the Ark symbolizes that all things will be revealed. Everything that's hiding, stuff that you don't even know about, stuff that is happening in your family, stuff that's happening behind closed doors that you don't even know anything about, things that God has for you that's been blocked by people that's in the way when you come into the divine presence of God. God, and you come behind the veil all things are revealed are you hearing what I'm saying when you come in this place you're gonna walk out of here with knowledge knowledge about stuff that you never would have known about but this is the place where he opens it up this is the place where he shows you not just your future but your family's future and your church's future and the nation's future I don't want to pray 
from the outer court in. Come on, help me, sons. I don't want to pray from the outer court in. I start at the outer court and I wash it, I cleanse. I repent at the east gate. I come to the first. I come to the first laver I wash. I come to the altar of sacrifice. I put me on the altar. And I say, God, burn up everything. Watch this. Everything that shouldn't be. Because when I take a step toward being in your divine presence, I'm not coming in there for me. I'm coming in there for anything, Holy Spirit, that you want to lay on my heart to come for. Ooh, I don't hear y'all talking to me right there. Because a lot of stuff you burden with is not the burden of the Lord. Okay, I'm going to say something right there. A lot of stuff that you depressed about is not the burden of the Lord. Because he says, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. If God gives it to you to walk it out and go through it, you're going to walk it out and go through it. But you're not going through it pitiful. And you're not going through complaining. And you're not going through feeling sorry for yourself. As a matter of fact, if didn't nobody know you was going through nothing, they wouldn't know it. Not by the way you praise. Because when it's a burden that the Lord drops on you, you come into the presence with the answer. And you go out with the answer. And you're not in doubt about what's going to happen. you enjoying the journey. You can go ahead and dance. You can go ahead and praise God because I've already seen the outcome. I know how this thing coming out. I know how God going to work it out because I learned early that the battle is not mine. It's the Lord and I need not fight in this battle. I don't need to fight you. I don't have to fight you. I'm going to drop these three nuggets and we're going to pick it up. Mother, in the outer court, when I come into the east gate of the tabernacle, I come in acknowledging the works of Jesus Christ. I war there. I war with my flesh because it is being introduced for the first time to another way of living. When I get to the brazen laver and I'm being washed by the word, I war there. That's where the mixture between man and God still exists. When I get behind the veil, there is no war there. Because in that place, it's all God and no man. No, no, no. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? And so the devil wants to keep prayer warriors always in the level of warfare and never allowing us to get behind the veil so that we can get what God is saying uninterrupted. If you don't believe me, there's a place that you can enter into the spirit realm that the devil can't follow you. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. There was a divine presence of the Lord that you can come into that demon spirits are forbidden. I don't think you hear what I'm saying. And if the devil can keep us in our flesh, in the outer court, then he knows that the things that God has to speak will not be revealed. But when we get in our flesh and we begin to say to God, Lord break me and mold me. God I'm tired of me. I'm ready to go behind this veil. I'm ready for you to reveal yourself to me. Then I go in oh God prostrated before him. But I come out with answers. Answers all the time. Not answers some of the time. Answers all the time. I come out with an answer. I come out I come out saying what is the Lord saying? He's saying, wait. What is, it, what is the Lord saying? He's saying in three days. See, let me help you something. If the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that we are a royal priesthood and the priest went in once a year and the people gathered around for miles and miles and miles, they didn't gather around to see him go in and come out. That wasn't no show. They gathered around because they knew when he went in and came out. Everybody was saying, what did the Lord say? Yeah. He better not have to came out that time. I, well, I didn't quite get an answer this year. Well, he just, he didn't say much, but oh, the glory. was so powerful in his prayer. We ain't stud no glory. 
We've been going through a whole year. We done sacrificed all we had and brought it to this temple. We done gave out our inheritance to help you build it. You are not getting ready to come out from the divine presence of the Lord and tell us that he was glorious. We can see his glory shining from the outside. What I need to know is what did he say about my tribe? Now, I just hit a revelation that I don't even know if y'all saw. They did not say, what did he say about me? He said, what did God say about my nation, about my tribe? So if you're still praying for you, you're not a royal priest. Because priests are not going in for themselves. They're, oh, y'all, they're going in for a nation. For a generation. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to help you graduate today. I'm trying to get you out of the me class. And the I class. Oh, come on somebody. And get you into the class of worldwide. I'm trying to take you to Africa to pray. I'm trying to take you into Venezuela. I'm trying to take you into Italy. I'm trying to put your spirit over in Russia. I'm trying to put you in a place where you know what God is saying for the nation. Because if you take care of God's business, he'll take care of yours. Uh, your light bill ain't nothing. He needs somebody to pray for Russia. Your gas bill ain't nothing. Your rent ain't nothing. He done paid rent uh, more rents than the law allow. Who can I send? That's what his cry. His cry is, who can I send? Who can I send? Who can I send? The scripture said that if my, the faith, Catherine, we close in with this. I gotta break, I gotta break, I gotta break. We go, but wait, wait, is we gonna pray? Well, if you don't know what you're talking about, what you praying about? I mean, you, be, you, be, you, be, you, be, you ain't call yourself a prayer warrior for 10 years. Everybody you pray for in the hospital die. People that you've been praying to get out of wheelchairs, they still rolling around with you now for lunch. Now you on the phone telling them, honey, I found this beautiful restaurant. Don't worry, because they got handicapped injuries. We're going to get you in. What you praying for? All your stuff that got set outside? And you broke, disgusted, busted. And the fact that you are disgusted and all your stuff set outside says to me that you don't know that he know the way that you take. <laughs> I'm gonna say it again. Lord, you gonna let me get us set outside? Yeah, cause some people he ain't gonna pay your rent. Some people he ain't gonna pay the light bill. The light's gonna be turned off. Okay, I'm correcting, I'm correcting a false doctrine about prayer. Cause you want God to fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. Fix it, God, fix it, God. Work it out, work it out, work it out. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. Oh God, help me, help me. Do it, do it, do it. Do it to the last minute. You got six more hours. Two more hours, God. An hour and a half. 45 minutes, they're gonna turn my lights out, God. I'm still believing you. 10 minutes, five, four, three, two, God. Boom. And your next response? Well, Lord, I thank you because you know the way that I take. And if you didn't deem to give me the money to put for the light bill, then whatever your purpose is for me to be in the dark or wherever you want me to go, your will be done, Father. Now that ain't, that ain't you. You, you, you on the phone crying. And I got my lights out, and all my food, I already had no food, and what I got is going to And I can't find nobody to spend the night with my kids. 
is just a light bill. Prayer is not a he gonna fix all. Prayer is he's going to fix you in all. That's, that's okay, because that, that went over your head like this. <laughs> Prayer is not he's going to fix all. Prayer is he's going to reposture you in all. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, let's read this so we can go home, because y'all sleepy, and y'all got to go to work. What did he say? In many separate revelations, each Hebrews of which... One. Hebrews 11 and 1. What did he say? Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation. Mm -hmm. it's an, faith is an assurance. Faith, faith is a dance and a shout. But you don't see none. It's an assurance. I'm confident. Okay. What kind of assurance is it? Is this kind of assurance. I'm black and I know I'm black. And you can't tell me I ain't black. Can't nobody here convince me that I ain't a black woman. You ain't black, you Indian. Call me what you want. But I'm black. I may be from Russia, but I'm black. I don't know, I know. We just go, well, you just act like a, well, I'm black. Well, you sing like a white woman, I'm black. I know I'm black. I'm black as black can be. I'm always be black. This gonna be me when y'all got me laid out in my casket, black. I have an assurance that I'm black. And if it rain outside, it ain't gonna wash my black off. If it's a thunderstorm that happened, I'm gonna still be black when it gets through thunder and lightning. I don't hear y'all saying nothing. If it's a snowstorm and it's 50 feet of snow, my black self gonna be stuck down in 50 feet of snow. Not no storm. If it's 99 degrees outside, I'm gonna be hot and black which says to me that no weather change can change my blackness I just said so which means when I have an assurance of what God said then no spiritual weather change can change what I speak now if you ain't got that kind of assurance you ain't got faith yet. I'm gonna say this. Love my death. Michael Jackson painted his whole self white. But he's still black. Which means sometimes you're gonna get attacked so bad then it's gonna make you look like you're another color, but you still black. Cause when they pull your DNA, you black. And y'all other people, y'all can be so toasty looking, look so crunchy from them, from them ray machines, you white. Ain't nothing gonna change that. You gonna get a little caramel in the summer, but when the winter time come, we gonna know you back. We gonna know you are. Ain't nothing gonna change that. Y'all better stop playing. Y'all play too much. Y'all better stop playing. We still black. Hair just as nappy. Y'all hair just as straight. We trying to straighten now. You trying to curl yours. We trying to straighten now so it can flop like white. You try to curl yours so it can nap like black? We still white and black. And I have that assurance. Every six weeks when I need a perm, I have that assurance. Y'all, yeah. every time I need to call Revlon and get to the beauty shop so they can touch up my edges, I have that assurance. We got something every six weeks to remind us. Don't forget you black. You better get to that beauty shop. That's the kind.
kind of assurance I'm talking about. Undeniable naps. Undeniable kink. That don't matter what happened to me. I'm gonna need a perm. And let me bring this to you. And I know it's comical, but it's true. I don't care how much I speak in tongue and get it in in the spirit. I'm still a black woman with naps speaking in tongues. And we want to get up in the spirit and try to think we're going to change God. He has predestined what is to come. And the reason why your prayers work, not because you done got him to change his mind, but you finally found his will. Because ain't nothing coming to pass but his will. Somebody clap right there because that was good. You ain't got in there and got God to change his mind about nothing. No, you kept on praying until you killed your flesh. And you kept on praying until you found his will. And the reason why every time you pray, God answers because you keep tapping what is his will. And when it's his will, it come to pass. When it isn't, it's a warfare. It's a struggle. What did he say so we can go home, Catherine? Now, faith is the assurance, yes. the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. I close with this. That true faith is the revelation of what is a fact that has not been revealed to the senses. So if you feel encouraged, you're not in faith yet. Your faith is activated when your senses haven't gotten the news. Touch, feel, Smell, handle, see when all of those elements are kept out of it. And yet you still believe God. The other day something happened. And when it happened, I, I caught myself and I said, I said, Lord, I thank you. And one of my workers said, why are, you, why are you looking like that? I said, because the Lord just found me worthy to move me in the faith. Because I don't see this situation working out. Senses. I don't feel this situation working out. Touch. I ain't heard nothing from nobody to let me know that it's going to be all right senses but yet when all of those elements disappear I am that much closer to the coming to pass because it cannot come through the senses the senses has to be annihilated before the miracle can come forth now I can't even minister that because that, that's, that, that's, that. Son, did you get that? Prophet Jones, did you get that? Did you get that? Did you get that? Did you get that? The census has to be removed from it. Removed from it. And then it comes. Because if not, it'll come through the census and the census will get, a, get the credit. I felt like that was going to happen. I, I, some told me that was going to happen. I felt like that. And that's all right. I feel encouraged. Census removed but I'm still speaking beyond my senses. This is what I know the will of the Lord is. And so when it comes to pass, nobody gets the glory but God. This may not, this may not mean nothing to you right now, but this week, because what the Lord is saying to me is that 
if I don't travel with this prayer and teach people how to believe God, then we're going to have a nation full of, full of frustrated believers. In church, just hallelujah and discouraged because they don't know the walk of faith. And you know why they don't know the walk of faith? Because somebody forgot to tell you that faith is suffering. Somebody forgot to tell you that your tears are part of the ingredients to your breakthrough. Somebody forgot to tell you that loneliness has to be a part of the key. Somebody forgot to tell you that travail and travailing until you feel empty and travailing until you don't even feel like God is listening to you. That you have to come to a place where you feel separated from the Father. I don't think y'all hear this. That a part of your prayer life is reaching some point at some time. when you have to say father are you there if you ain't had no father are you there experience then you ain't no intercessor well you turn around and say what did I do so wrong that you would let me go through like this is it going to ever change God you got to come to the place because as long as you're saying that to God then he knows that you're not in love with his will as long as you're coming to him and saying do I have to keep suffering like this is you going to ever fix this are you, gonna, are you just going to leave me like this I'm praying I'm praying I'm praying and it seems like you ain't nowhere around me he's waiting He's waiting for this brother. He's waiting for you to say, okay, God. If this ain't your will, you don't ever have to change it, but I'll be found in your presence every day. Do you see how low the amens went? Because we're not a people that will say to the Lord, okay, Lord, if you don't never change this, if this is what my plight is for the rest of my life, then it's okay and the reason why it's okay because I know you and I trust you and I know that you wouldn't put no more on me than I can bear and I know that you know the way that I take and when you've tried me you're gonna bring me out as pure gold and pure gold may not be my way pure gold may look like it ain't in my favor but he doesn't work it for your favor he works it for his favor and so God I yield to you I want to be an intercessor now watch this this is deep I want to be a person that you can depend upon to pray for anything that you put in my spirit to pray for even if I feel that you haven't worked mine out okay look at how low the amens is right there look at how low the amens is right there I'll answer the call of prayer. Jesus said, I'll be an intercessor even if you don't get me off the cross. Father, I'm going to pray for the nation in this garden. And I know they coming to put crowns of thorns on my head. But I'm still choosing to pray for your people that they don't be lost. I know they gonna beat my back with cat nine tails. And nigga, when they get through, it's gonna look like a plow field. You ain't getting ready to get me out of this. But I'm gonna make a decision to say nevertheless about what I'm gonna go through in my flesh. I'm going to stand in the spirit for the world. Is somebody getting what I'm just saying? They're going to march me from judgment hall to judgment hall. They're going to put me on the cross in the worst moment in my life. 
Who are we? Who are we to say, God, you didn't forget about me. Where is you at? The Bible said that when Jesus came to the point of ultimate sacrifice, that God himself had to turn his back and separate himself from him. So why are we screaming out in prayer, where are you at, God? Noah cried it's going to rain for over 120 years. He built an ark and didn't know what no ark looked like. Can I help you out with something today? He cried rain and had never seen it before. Did anybody ever think about that? It hadn't rained before. How he know what rain looked like? It's going to rain. And I know many days he had to go in his house and say, well, what is rain? He couldn't run down the street and look at Ezekiel's ark and say, okay, should I put this window right here? Let me go down here. And oh, I see how he got it in. He angled the wood that way, and then I can come back here and put this window in here. Okay, now this second level, right here that's supposed to hold my family. I can't seem to get this board. Let me run down the street and see how, how she built her board. Okay, I got it. All right. Okay. Oh, I got I to cut too short. I got to, okay, let me come back down here. I'm going to build it inside of because I got the measurements. He had nobody to compare what God had told him to do to. He couldn't find another one like it. And we stopped praying because God don't do it in two months. When he prayed for over 120 real years. He held on to what God said. It's going to rain. Get your house in order because it's going to rain. And he kept building. That's why I come to prayer. Because I've been given a futuristic word. I've been given a prophetic announcement about what God is going to do. And my job is to do nothing but keep building ark. Keep building my spirit. Keep consecrating. Keep meditating. Keep being in his word. Keep coming to the meeting place until God says different. Because it's going to rain. And if you don't do it in two months, and if you don't do it in six months, and if you don't do it in nine months, if you don't do it in two years, if I live to be 109 years old, let me make you this promise, honey. I will take my last breath believing God. my last one. Somebody in here said, well, how is that possible? Then you need to read your Bible. And you need to read Hebrews 11 chapter because everybody in that chapter, the Bible called them great men and women of faith. Everybody did not receive the promise. So then my sister, then the promise of faith can't be what I can get. The promise of real faith is that I never stop believing. Because the body of Christ is determined whether or not you got big faith, little faith, or no faith by what you got. Oh, I'm going for the big thing. I'm going for a million dollar house. Ooh, honey, you got big faith. Mm -mm. To get a house doesn't prove you have faith. Whew. To believe God, regardless to what your circumstance is says that I have faith. Because he can give you a house and you can turn around two months later and die from cancer. Then did you get faith or did you get a house? Then faith must not be what I can get in my hand. Faith is what I have the ability to hold in my heart. 
This is the first day, and that's too deep for y'all to even swallow that, because some of y'all still looking at me like, like, wait a minute now. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mother, he said, and some died in the faith, having not received the promise, so that others can believe. That's right. Now, that don't make no sense. That's right. Then why did that happen like that? That's right. It happened like that because what God wanted to show us, he wanted to show us through Noah, that it is possible to believe something for 120 years. He wanted to show us through Sarah and Abraham that it is possible for the, body, for the condition of your body to be past what the doctors say and God still do it. Why do you think he said they that wait upon the Lord? Why do you think he said faith worketh patience? Not faith working what I get. Faith worketh patience and patient experience. And experience hope and hope make it not a shame. What does faith work? Patience. What does patience work? Experience. What is he trying to give us? An experience with him. He ain't trying to give you a car. I close. I close. I can't even dig that out today. He's trying to give you an experience with him. He ain't trying to give you stuff. He's trying to make sure you got the experience of faith. Because I may need to use your faith over here. I may need to use it over there. And what I need to do is I need to give some people in here some assignments. That I can trust them that in six months they'll still be holding on. that in nine months, they'll keep decreeing it until it come to pass. All over this building as I, I'm doing TBN tonight. This is such an awkward time for me to do this prayer. And I even challenged the Lord. I said, God, why you got, I gotta do TBN. Next week is my women's conference. All the stuff that I got lined up, women on the front line. I said, Lord, I'm just sacrifice. Because my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. I leave this place going to the airport and from the airport back to Atlanta. I was in the studio half the night, the night before. Didn't get in until 4 o'clock in the morning. Finishing up the last touches on my new CD that's about to be released. And got up. Had to take care of some business for the conference. Came right on the plane. Got here last night. Had to go to my computer. Listen to some music that was downloaded that they have to put the finishing touches on to last night. To one o'clock in the morning. I'm here. Got to leave here. Get on the plane. Go to Atlanta get in makeup, and shoot the TBN show tonight. The next morning I leave for Barbados, going to preach. I'll be preaching there for two days, coming back Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I will be right back here. Because he knows the way that I take. And I have a motto, mother, I'm gonna be found faithful. Because he said in his word that a faithful man shall abound in blessings. Not talents and gifts. Faithfulness. I want him to know he can depend on me. I want him to know that he got a battle axe in me. I want God to be able to look to the left and say, Juanita will go. She'll do it. That's why he keeps on. I left Waycross all week long, working all day. Well up until 12 and 1 and 2 o'clock in, in the morning and I would put on all of this that I got on now and get on the threshing floor and walk the floor all night with maybe an hour worth of sleep. And soon I had one of my workers, Madge, raise your hand. One night I came off of the floor and she said my first experience, I went into the threshing floor. And this night, she said, I had never, I would always lay on the carpet around the threshing floor, but I would never step on it. And she said, that night I stepped up on it. She said, and it was an experience I can never, ever, ever forget. 
She said, I picked up all kinds of things that whoever all of these shawls are going to, my spirit just began to pray. It's like when you step up on that floor, you step into a zone. And I've been there all week long before I came here. Because I don't play about prayer. Because I know that prayer doesn't just change things. It changes everything. Yeah. Prayer is the thing that will get you to the place. That if God don't fix your stuff. He'll fix you to a place where you don't even care no more. Okay. Come on, somebody need to bless him right there. Uh-uh, somebody need to bless him right there. Somebody need to tell God that today. God, if you don't fix it, fix me to a place where I don't even care no more. I don't know about y'all, but I want to get my, I want to get my certificate from the Holy Spirit from the class of it just don't matter no more. No, we ain't going to work till my Lord fix her because she just, she rides me and she do this and she talk about she turned the boss against me. Well, what's wrong with you, the honey? It don't even matter no more. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about right there. Every Tuesday, as I leave this place, every Tuesday, every Tuesday, the Lord will commission us in this place to a point of sacrifice. We're going to worship God in a minute before we unveil the Ark of the Covenant. It will stay here until the Lord tells us that it's time to move the prayer to another city. And we will crate it up and ship it to the next city and the next city and we'll keep traveling with it. Because the presence, I'm one that really believes that it denotes that his divine presence is here. And that we're no longer struggling trying to get into his presence. We're in his presence. Every week, the Lord is going to ask individuals in this place he spoke a word to me and told me to call them faith walkers. Because the scripture said, you show me your faith. Show me your works and I'll show you your faith. Because real faith without works is dead. And I don't care how much we say we believe God, we have to do something to prove that. Me getting on the plane and coming here is my proof that I believe in what I do. It's not about being famous. When it come down to this is sacred. Because I'll be in here praying and taking the people up for whatever the assignment of the Spirit is in these days to come. He has an assignment. Because when I left the prayer in New York and the Lord said, leave it for a season. And the prayer is still going on, but I haven't been there in several months. And the Lord picked this place up in my spirit. So when he repicked the mantle up, there's an assignment that he had for me to help the people of God understand that the Lord has called us to an assignment. So when we come in here next week, the praise team may not be up here singing. This was just to help you out for the first day. Because we don't have a praise team. At five o'clock, we start praying. Yeah. By next week, you'll receive a flyer or a paper when you walk in that door with stuff on it that the Lord has given me, names that the Lord has given me, cities that the Lord has given me, countries 
We're not going to be idle prayers. And oh, Lord, to help me and strengthen me. And oh, oh, hallelujah. Hey, whoa, I feel it. We ain't doing nothing. We're going to storm the gates of hell. We're going to pray for what God wants us to pray for. Because when we come together as a corporate unit and begin to pray for things in this nation, and we can sit on the loose and look at CNN all we want to, and say, that's a shame, and all of what's going on. It's going on like that because God can't find people to pray. But I believe the Lord done found a place. I believe that God got a people in here. calls them faith walkers because I have to come every week and I cannot put the burden of this on this ministry so I'm walking in faith pastor never asked me anything when I told him what God told me to do he said if that's what God is leading you to do I'm honored that you would even choose this ministry to house something so awesome Listen, you're going out of here and all week long in your cars, in your kitchen while you're cooking, I want you to get a notepad and it is your prayer notepad. Get a notebook when a name hits your spirit, when a situation hits your spirit, when a family hits your spirit, you put it in your book. Because when you come back to pray the next week and I said, let's pray, you're going to walk with your book. You're going to call out names and you're going to call out conditions in your book. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're not just going to be in here talking about I'm praying. You're going to pray what the Spirit of the Lord has prompted you to pray. Now you know you're praying His will. Because I was driving down the street and I wasn't even thinking about that person. And the Holy Ghost dropped them in my spirit. So this must be my assignment on Tuesday. I was driving around the street. I wasn't even thinking about that pastor across town. But the Holy Ghost dropped his name in my spirit. Because the Bible said that the fervent, effectual prayers. And the word fervent is praying till you get to a boiling point. So that ain't sleepy whispering praying. Hallelujah. Ooh, you're just so sweet to me, Jesus. No. Fervent, effectual prayers of a righteous person availeth much. Every week we're going to be asking for faith walkers. Every person in this building. This week may not be your week, next week may be your week, but how do I know when it's my week? When the Lord prompts me to respond, not out of my feelings, not out of what I sense. But if I believe God, I just move in what he says. Every single week, I'm going to ask for faith walkers. And those would be people that for the season that God has me coming, as often as you can, you walk with the seed faith of $100. Because it takes expenses to do this. It takes expenses for me to bring my whole staff because everybody is working. Nobody that you see walking in here with me don't have a job. Everybody has a job. And we had to even leave two of our musicians behind because they had to finish up some things that we need for the conference and, and finish up some things that I needed to be done for the record. But then they will be added to this. So every person in this building I want somebody to get me some envelopes. And if we do this every week, it won't even be an offering thing. When I call for faith walkers, you just get up and start walking. Because I don't want anything to break the flow of what God wants to do. Because if God wants me to, I'll pay for it myself. But I believe God desires that we sow into where you're trying to go. We're going to do this quickly and then we're going to worship God and, and unveil the ark. Everybody get your seed offering in your hand right now. Everybody get your seed offering. Don't hold it up yet. Just get it in your hand. In the black 
overflow room. Your first assignment, how many first of all believe the Lord has called you to this place for this season? Because I, I want to know who I'm talking to now. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say this looking in the faces of people that next week you're going to be too sleepy. How many know that this is, this is a season before the Lord and you don't want to miss your season? People of God, let me, let me just say this to you. I'm here for the same reason that you're here. I'm here because when the Lord called me to 5 a.m. prayer, it's my reasonable service. It is my, it is my personal assignment. And I'm here for the same reason you're here. I'm here to locate his will for my life. I'm, I'm, I'm here to locate what his will is, what his next level is for me, mother. I'm not here, mother, just to bring y'all to a place. I'm here because if the Lord has called me to do this, then there's something else that he's about to call me into. He's calling me to a burning bush because he wants to speak an assignment to me. So when I get ready to say this, that's why I wanna, I wanna see the hands of the people. I can't see you in the overflow room as well, but I wanna see the hands of the people that know that the Lord has called you for this season. And that these Tuesdays is your sacrifice. This isn't, this isn't normal. And I never said it would be easy. But the Bible tells us to present your body a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. After next Tuesday, you can invite somebody if you like, but after next Tuesday, I'm going to start having you to invite people that's not saved. Because in the 5 a.m. prayer, we, we saw a mighty sweep and a mighty hand of God in the area of salvation. Next Tuesday, God's going to use us to birth some things through in the atmosphere for the prayer. We're going to decree some things in the atmosphere for the prayer. And if you let me teach you, I can teach you what the Lord has taught me about prayer. The ministry that he's given me has gone where it's gone because of prayer. That's why I'm never ashamed of what God calls me to do. I don't have a problem putting on this and becoming nothing. Because all the times when people don't see me and I'm on the floor and sackcloth and ashes, God has set me before kings and queens. He set me before a nation that started on my face. As we begin to worship God and we begin to decree in the atmosphere that this is the ground that the Lord has called us to for this season. And you're going to begin to decree that with that offering envelope in your hand. Because this is no different than the Old Testament when they brought a seed offering to finance the tabernacle. We're going to declare that we're going God's way. The Bible said there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end of that way is destruction. Sick bodies are going to be healed in this place. Testimonies from incurable diseases are going to be spoken of in this meeting. Supernatural miracle finances is going to happen in this meeting. And can I tell you how it's going to happen? Because we're going to put the will of the Lord first. 
and he's going to put what's on our heart first. That's how you get God's attention. You get God's attention. He pays attention to those that pays attention to his will. He picks up the burden of those who pick up the burden of him. In the next 30 seconds, I want you to begin to worship and praise God. Because this is something that is unusual. This prayer for six years was in New York City, five o'clock in the morning, over 1,700 people, and the Lord lifted it from me, paused for a season, told me to send for the ark, put it in storage, and now he pulls it out again. And the first time it leaves New York, it comes here. Don't you fool yourself. Don't you fool yourself. God's up to something. And I want you in this building to begin to bless the Lord and to begin to praise him and worship him. Because as we unveil this ark, the Lord is calling this place holy. Come on, I don't hear you, come on. Come on, you bless him. Come on musicians, all musicians. Come on. His glory is in this house. Come on, you begin to bless him. You bless him in advance for what you know he's about to do.
this place to be. We bless you for our faith, Lord. 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 There's two things that we need to get the concept of. And I won't be able to backtrack and preach this because the Lord got me on another journey with us. But these are two messages that you need to put in your spirit because I don't know how many weeks the Lord want me to be here and I don't want to get ahead of God and I don't want to say it'll be four weeks and five weeks and six weeks and it's not I do know that it will be at least two more weeks next Tuesday and the Tuesday after that I'll only know from that point I'll announce every Tuesday whether or not I feel the Lord is saying go another Tuesday I won't be able to backtrack and preach these messages because he got me already prepared to deliver something else. So I need you to make these a part of your library, the power of the threshing floor. And when the righteous cry, you gotta have these concepts so you can fully understand what I'm about to lay for the next couple of weeks because I'm getting ready to, to preach prayer from a level of maturity. I'm getting ready to preach prayer from a level of maturity, from a level of you getting results and not wishing you had results, from a level of you perfectly understanding where you are in your faith. Body has to come in. When I get through it, laying these foundations in you you won't need anybody to come and tell you where you are in your faith you won't need anybody to come and tell you where you are period you will be able after the next two weeks you will be able to track where you are in God you'll be able to understand the signs of where you are you'll be able to understand am I close to the victory Am I on my way to the victory? Or is this thing going to be a victory that belongs to God but not necessarily belong to me? And there is a difference. When we say God going to give us the victory, we have to know who is to get the victory at that time. Because some things he going to work out, he going to give us the victory. Some things he going to work it out. We may be a little bit disappointed, but it would be his victory. But he got to train us how to celebrate in both. Whew. I got to stop saying stuff like that because I, I keep saying stuff and y'all keep looking at me like, okay, I ain't, I'm not there. I'm really not, I'm really not ready for that. Because if not, saints, we'll stay delusional. We'll keep coming to church and we'll stay delusional in our minds. Because you know what? It's easier for us to believe the candy side of faith. He going to do it. He going to do it my way. He going to fix it. We going to shout. We going to dance. And I'm going to have it all. Rather than to come into the reality of faith. And that is, it's not important for me to have my way. It's important for me to have God's way. So before you, in the midst of us doing this, we're going to leave the tapes with this ministry all week long. You need to get these two. Because like I said, in order for you to understand the revelation of where I'm going from here, 
And I didn't even begin today. Today was just an introduction to say we've started this prayer. I have not even tapped into where God wants to take me with this prayer. We haven't even scratched the surface yet. If you can really believe me when I tell you that. We haven't even scratched the surface of where God wants to take. The breakthrough in the prayer isn't even here yet. This is just the introduction. Tell somebody it's going to be greater than this. Touch somebody and say it's going to be greater than this. They're out at the tape table when the righteous cry. The Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their troubles. And the power of the threshing floor. Which last week I finished the last chapter and turned it in. And the book will be out September the 6th in bookstores everywhere. The power of the threshing floor, which would be, I believe, the beginning of one of the greatest messages I have ever written about in my entire career. Prayer doesn't change things. It changes everything. It changes everything. And as you put your seed offering in your hand and lift that up before the Lord, Father, we thank you.